our, our favorite son of Tony Pensatelli speak to us next. Um, he's our freeholder candidate. We know that he has worked tirelessly to make sure things are getting done on a positive level here in Bamberg. And I'm very excited that he's running. I think it's a great year for him to do it. And um, I just want you to have the opportunity to hear what he has to say. Tony Pensatelli. It's just a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to see Democrats, Independents, and Republicans all united for a better world. And, and that's pretty cool. Um, I want to talk quickly about how we, quickly, how we governed in the, the five years, or almost five years that I've been uh, in municipal government. And um, there's you know, a lot of candidates when they run, they say they're for this, they're for that. But I'm just going to talk about what we did and, and sh sort of show you good government versus bad government. Because the first year I was on the council, I was elected and I was so happy to be elected. But we had a, I was elected to a Republican council and uh, didn't want to be an obstructionist, so I sort of went along with a lot of the things they did. And one of the things that Republicans believe is, let's, government is evil, we need to get rid of it, we need to sh shrink it down as small as we can, uh, sort of like cut the beast down. And we did things like cut our public works in half. We sold the streets we worked. We didn't, um, uh, we didn't, we hire police that retire. Um, we, we did do one thing. We paid $200 for the borough attorney, which was more than anybody else. But you know, he wears a white collar, so he's cool. So he's worth the money. That was $200 per hour. $200 per hour. And, and, we're, and, and by the way, we rehired him again this year. Um, so the result of all that was unsafe streets, dirty streets. And guess what? The municipal taxes went up anyway. Because what we had is a government that just doesn't work. So I learned my lesson quickly. And, and just to be fair, there were some things that I was the Democrat on the council. And even though I voted for this, it was a negotiation. And they wanted to even take away more things. So my little voice did save some things from, from it even becoming a bigger cut. So then. Obviously, the population wasn't, like, the residents of Bamberg weren't too happy, and they gave the Democrats control of the council. And before long, I became the council president. So now I became put, put in the driver's seat to, to do things. And, and these are some of the things I did. And in the beginning, it was a little rough because I caught a lot of flack. I remember my, my biggest interest was economic development. I really thought that if we could figure out some way of getting more revenues in the budget, that's the best way to keep taxes stable and, and get services back that we lost. So I remember I, I became the chair of economic development and we started entertaining developers and I started showing them our dirty streets and telling them to invest in Downbrook. And one of the developers said to me, Tony, well, who's your downtown manager? And I said, well, we don't have one. And, and his response immediately was, well, you expect me to develop in Downbrook, to invest my money in Downbrook when you guys don't want to even invest in your hometown. So immediately we found a downtown manager. It costs twenty four thousand dollars of taxpayers' money. And as soon as you know all of a sudden here comes the tax and spend Democrat. But I had the votes, I hired her. Next thing is we had a, a, a building that was an eyesore called the Bolmer building. And it once was a wonderful building but it took serious damage from Hurricane Floyd. And this was a site that was a potential site to develop. Well, the council said, well, we have to find a grant. We've got to get rid of this. We've got to demolish this building. And then we can demolish this building. And someday we can sell it. And, and I'm like, no, no, no. It's $85,000 to demolish this building. We're going to spend $85,000 worth of taxpayers' money to demolish this building. Again, caught, you know, caught a lot of flack. Here comes the tax and spend Democrat. You know? and, and Lisa Bogart was on the committee to, to sort of give me the encouragement to do this, you know, because I guess she was being called to a tax and spend Democrat. We call it investing in Bound Brook, but so we did it. So now the bill is, I guess, a little over $100,000, and now we have a clean site and a downtown manager. Well, <laughs> before you knew it, guess what? We got a developer. We got a developer to pay three quarters of a million dollars for the Bomer site, and that's just the beginning. For three quarters of a million dollars, once the site gets developed, it'll bring in millions of dollars of revenues through the years from taxes. So 
immediately. Now, you know, we did other things too, by the way, because we, now we have revenues in the budget. Besides keeping our taxes fairly stable this year, which is pretty incredible after we had a major flood, which by the way, we, have, you know, we do get some aid for that, but we have to pay for a lot of that out of our own pocket. But the other thing that, that um, we did is we hired back three police officers. We bought a street sweeper. So we got that, we sort of did, got, took back some of the things, some of the mistakes we made. So it's just an example, and this is my philosophy. This is how I govern. If you invest, if you spend money today, you'll reap the reward tomorrow. The old, I mean, I'm Italian. The old Italian saying is, you need to plant, you plant the olive tree, the first olive tree doesn't come for seven years. In this case, it came in two years. But still, <laughs> it's about investing, and that's how I govern in Brownbrook, and as a Somerset County freeholder, I plan to continue to, to use this philosophy. Thank you. All right.